we have what we would view as a very globally significant resource. On that last update, we upgraded a significant amount of our inferred material to indicated. So we now have roughly, round figures here, 680 million tons of indicated resource, and a further 550 million tons that remain in the inferred category. Hello to all viewers tuning in to Assay TV. I'm delighted to be introducing Voyager Metals today. Voyager are developing a high quality iron resource in the Chigabugamu region of Quebec. Cliff Hall Sanders is with me. Cliff's the CEO of the company. Welcome, Cliff. Great. Thank you very much for having me on today. Yeah, thanks for joining us. And look, why don't we start with a high level overview of the company, seeing as this is the first time we've featured Voyager? Sure. Uh, Voyager Metals is what we would view as a unique iron ore and vanadium story. The key project is, is the Mont Sorcier project located just outside of the town of Shibugamu in northern Quebec. And we've defined a, a significant uh, resource base in, in place, which we can discuss in a minute. And we've completed some initial preliminary economic assessment, which really underscores an extremely robust project going forward. But a couple of things to point out. This is a high grade magnetite deposit. So we will be producing a premium quality 65% or higher Iron, iron ore uh, product going forward, which is in, in huge demand for the steel business, where it's some significant environmental benefits to the steel uh, production process. We have tremendous access to infrastructure. There's roads and ra railways and port facilities in this part of Quebec that are underutilized and available for us to use. So from a, an ease of development uh, for the project is very robust. I've been involved with the project since roughly mid-2019, uh, mid was brought on board to join Mark Brennan, our chairman, uh, Mark and, and some of the wider team has developed various other mines in the world. The last one of, of substance that really relates to this project is the Marica, is Largo's Maricas Canadian mine in, in Brazil, which the team brought forward from essentially a grassroots exploration all the way through to, through, through to operation. So the team has significant experience in bringing mines from the very early stage all the way through to operation. Excellent. Thanks for that. Okay, so the main, main news here that we want to cover right now is your recently released PEA and the maiden resource update at uh, Mont Saucia, uh, the, the main iron ore project that you described. So please take us through uh, that project specifically and your latest results. Sure. On uh, the first one, we'll, we'll start with the resource. We have what we would view as a very globally significant resource. On that last update, we upgraded a significant amount of our inferred material to indicated so we now have roughly, round figures here, 680 million tons of indicated resource and a further 550 million tons that remain in the inferred category. And why do we focus in on the indicated? Uh, the deposit is split into two, uh, two zones, the north and the south zone, very original, and I, I understand. Uh, 560 million tons of indicated material now resides in the north zone, which was upgraded from purely inferred before. This has allowed us to focus on the north zone as our initial point in the, the mining sequence, simplifying a lot of the processes and, and development plans that we have. We had done a previous work that looked at both zones, but this will be much simpler. So with that sort of uh, amount of material at our disposal, roughly 1.2 billion tons of total resource, you're looking at something now that's globally significant in scale. So within the PEA, we looked at a, a mine development project that's producing 5 million tons per year of concentrate, uh, over a 21 year mine life. Upfront capital cost, including contingency was roughly 575 million US. The MPV of this project was 1.6 billion US at using iron ore prices, which we would view as very conservative over the long term. We were using a 62% iron ore price of $100 per ton. And we use 62 because that's the most common benchmark price that is available in the market. We expect to get roughly a 20% premium above that for the premium grade iron ore quality product we're producing. But we also expect to get, which differentiates us from an, every other iron ore project, a vanadium credit. Our, our concentrate material will contain roughly 0.5 to 0.6% V2O5 in the concentrate. We expect to get a roughly 15% per ton concentrate credit for that. Why do we expect that? 52% of the world's vanadium is produced from magnetite mines, just like this one in China. This is not a new technology. It really is a technology choice. Do you want to extract the vanadium or not? Uh, that So those facilities are in place in, in China, Europe, and the Middle East. We're seeing vanadium continue to grow as a strategic metal. So we expect that credit to continue to differentiate us from just another iron ore project. Costs should be roughly $66 per ton delivered to China. 
So we're expected to make a roughly 50% margin over 21 years, generating EBITDA of roughly 350 million per year and free cash flow of 235 million uh, to deliver that MPV. So a very, very financially robust project, a very simple and straightforward project to build. It's a large scale open pit uh, mine, a simple uh, processing, it's three stage magnetic separation. So our biggest cost driver is power. Uh, being in Quebec, we have access to low cost, uh, extremely low cost in the global context, hydropower, again, making our project as green as can be. And the fact that we don't have to build a railway and a port facility, I would estimate probably saving us 1.5 billion in additional capital. So relative to a lot of other projects around the world, primarily in Australia, we see so many benefits in terms of infrastructure, lower upfront capital needs and premium quality product uh, that we think our project has the best merits uh, of any of them being considered in the market today. Fantastic. Yeah, certainly. Really great numbers there. Great MPV and some of the attributes that you mentioned around you know, the hydro aspect being in the right region. You're certainly in the right spot. Quebec, we know, is a great mining jurisdiction. Uh, seems to win in your sales in that respect. But look, what's the next stage for either scaling this resource? What's the strategy? What are the catalysts that investors can look for as, as you look to develop this? Yeah, the key catalyst for us now with the new PEA, we have repositioned what we want to design. And coming up around the end of Q1 23, we expect to have a full 43101 compliant feasibility study complete, really just hopefully reconfirming all these numbers. So there'll be a little bit of movement here and there, but we expect by and large this number to be very supportive. At the same time, we, we should be in a position by the middle of 23 to submit our environmental and social impact statement which really starts the, the clock ticking in terms of the permitting profile so that we have our full mining permits. And as you pointed out, Shibugamu is a mining and Quebec is a mining friendly jurisdiction. There is quite a structured process to go through that permitting cycle, but it is, as I said, very structured. So you will get your permit as long as you do the work necessary to deliver mm -hmm. that. So the biggest near-term event in our opinion would be crystallizing the value through the PEA and starting the clock ticking on getting those permits. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Um, so let's look at the company uh, in a different perspective from the financial side of things. Um, are you fully funded uh, at the moment to, to get those catalysts going? Uh, what's the shareholder structure like at the moment? Are you looking to bring in strategic selling point? Just take us through that. We're, we're talking to all facets there. We, are, we, we will be looking to finalize a funding package at some point in the near future. We have an offtake agreement with Glencore. Uh, in return for that offtake, they are in a position to support us uh, for what we call a financial assistance agreement, not necessarily their money directly, but they've been introducing us to various groups around the world uh, to support us in a funding package to, to essentially complete the feasibility study and really daylight this value. So we expect to be in a position to close on that relatively shortly, and that should fund us to feasibility. I would mm -hmm. point out management has a direct interest of roughly 15% in this company. And I think, you know, friends and family probably have another 10 to 15 percent as well excellent so very okay. very much aligned to bring this project to the next level yeah certainly it's good um so you touched on the management before you mentioned you know you know mark brennan and the experience of the team but, but who uh, working in brazil but who, who's on the team who are the uh technical team members can you tell us a bit more about that okay the key technical members within the quebec region because those are the guys on the ground Hubert valet is our, our lead project manager he's been involved with with Consolidated Thompson at the very early stages, which made the Bloom Lake mine, which is now Champion Resources. So he's been involved with pretty much every Canadian iron ore mine uh, that's ever been built. He's brought up, we brought on board with him, uh, Robert Giardin to help support him on the infrastructure and, and the build out there on the feasibility study. Our exploration is led by Pierre-Jean Lafleur, who's again been exposed to various iron ore mines around the world and other mines. But again, uh, he's been responsible for upgrading the resource to what it is today. So we've been able to attract very seasoned professionals who now have a greater reach to continue to bring this project to the next level. At the board and the advisory level, we have people who have been involved with numerous mines around the world, uh, not necessarily on the management payroll at this point in time, but again, available to us through other, other contacts. Excellent. Okay. And you mentioned the hydro aspect, you know, power, obviously on the cost element, but also on a sustainability and low carbon uh, credibility so um for your project but are there any other 
ESG aspects or uh, community social programs, things like that, that you're building into the project as you begin to scale? As we go forward to the next level, that's really what where all those areas coalesce and come together, looking at the impact of benefit agreements with the, the Aboriginal nations in the, in the area, with the local community in Shibugamu, those conversations as the project now gets uh, more credibility, more uh, realistic and the time frame become more important. As I said, it, it is a mining friendly area. There have been mines permitted in the district recently. So again, if as long as the, the work process is done correctly, we're very confident in getting those permits in a timely manner. We haven't seen anyone at, at this point really raise any red flags. Yeah, fantastic. So Cliff, if you had to sum up for the investors uh, and, and viewers, uh, the sort of the, the key, key milestones to watch at the moment, the, the permits are moving towards the PEA. Well, the, sorry, the PEA is done. So we uh, have, I think the key things will be yeah. securing the, the funding package to make sure that we have sufficient funds to complete the feasibility study. The feasibility study come out, coming out in early 2023, uh, which I think will just reconfirm these numbers but really give them just that a higher degree of confidence. And then we'll move forward from there to submit all the documentation to the government to get our full mining permits and then move forward. Based on the numbers we're seeing, we're not the actual construction financing, I think would be relatively straightforward just because the economics are, are so strong. So the, the, the biggest value creation is really getting this project in the eyes of the market and the eyes of the pipeline uh, on a, a much more structured timeline uh, that gives people confidence of when that, cash flows are going to start to accrue yeah certainly and uh it's quite unique in the sense you know an iron ore project with vanadium uh optionality as well it's quite uh unique i suppose uh, for the region uh well just on that a lot of iron ore projects have vanadium the question is do you have enough of it to just right. be extracting it and that's where our project is different and unique but just as important is we don't have any titanium or no, any titanium of note if you have high degrees of titanium you can't sell your iron ore product directly to the blast burner. So we are lucky based on the type of deposit we have that we should benefit from the high grade magnetite, the vanadium and lacking titanium. Yeah, very pure. Excellent. Well, very good to get the introduction and the update, Cliff. It seems like uh, the wind's in your sails, as we said, and we very much look forward to catching up with the project again on Assay TV later in the program. Great. Thank you very much for your time today. Thank you.